Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be answering one of the mysterious questions about the formation of planets from the protoplanetary disk. In other words, we're going to be talking about how planets turn into planets out of dust. And it's something that has been bugging scientists for a very long time. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So just like you see in the simulation right here, we do have a pretty good understanding of how planets form from various smaller particles. And most of this is based on looking around the galaxy and finding these protoplanetary disks that we found in a lot of different places. Here are just some of the actual pictures from these um, various star systems. And if you were to zoom into one of them, you would see something like this. So basically this is a kind of a dust-like formation, what's known as a protoplanetary disk, where even the central object here is not necessarily a star yet. So we're talking about really, really early star systems or I guess in our case really early solar system formation approximately four and a half billion uh, years ago. And one thing here is that even though we see it happening we're not entirely certain how the actual physical components work especially when it comes to really, really small particles. So even though generally we understand how larger pieces can then collide into even larger pieces, create basically um, asteroid-like formations, and then those protoplanetary materials will then combine into planetary materials and create larger and larger planets, when it comes to smaller particles, this is where the mystery kind of begins. There's a certain particle of a certain size where we're not really sure how anything forms. Because if you were to put some of the smaller things together, they don't actually stick, they tend to fly apart. But we know for a fact that smaller particles do combine and we do get a lot of these examples from right here around Saturn. We've detected several moons inside the Saturn's rings and we've also detected particles of various sizes, so we know that super tiny dust can then combine into larger pieces and that can combine into essentially moon-like objects. But even though we kind of understand how smaller particles form, because basically if you were to take two small tiny particles that are well essentially about a millimeter in size and if you were to kind of bring them close together they would actually stick. This is sort of how the so-called dust bunnies form around your house. Like for example if you don't clean uh, for a few weeks you'll have these formations around the house where particles just stick together. And we believe something similar is responsible for creating larger pieces um, in protoplanetary disks. But once they reach a size of about an inch or a few centimeters, it will be very difficult for these two particles to join together. As a matter of fact, when the scientists try to test this, they realize that after a certain size, things just no longer stick. They kind of just bounce away from each other. And this is where the mystery begins. For a very long time, we couldn't really figure out how a typical star system goes from this to forming larger pieces. Something in there did not really add up. How did the larger pieces start to stick? And so this is where the new research comes in. This physics paper in Nature magazine describes a very unique method on the formation of larger pieces using nothing but electromagnetism. In their paper, the scientists describe how larger pieces actually start becoming electromagnetically charged mostly due to various collisions that they start experiencing and of course because the sun itself starts producing a lot of radiation that can technically uh, turn these particles uh, more electromagnetic. So in some sense they actually turn into little magnets. And even though they're all more or less same charge, once these particles get close enough together, they start acquiring different poles. And that's when they start merging into the pieces that you see right here. They start forming larger and larger aggregates, some of which will actually then become basically protoplanetary objects. In other words, they might get large enough where then gravitation takes over. So once these pieces are at least a few inches large, gravitation will then attract them, creating larger and larger pieces and starting the process of planetary development through collisions with larger pieces that then of course create things like planets. 
So this definitely solves one of the biggest mysteries in planetary formation of how these pieces stick together. And what's more is that this discovery actually provides a very functional and very fundamental solution to one of the problems we've had with industries here on the planet. More specifically, the scientists behind this paper use an example of what's known as a fluidized bed reactor. It's these large cylinder containers that often have various reactions inside of them. And for the longest time, uh, we couldn't really figure out why in certain cases these bed reactors would end up getting clogged. And the scientists behind this paper explained that the clogging very likely happens because of the statically um, or electrically charged particles that are generated through the activity inside the reactor. So essentially their research doesn't just help us um, explain how planets form and how smaller particles get into large particles. Their research also presents a very practical solution to how we can improve productivity here on the planet in factories or in industries that use this production. And the solution here would be to prevent electromagnetism from forming by essentially using materials that would somehow diffuse um, the static electricity inside the actual reactor. So in other words, once again, the space research actually discovered something that is directly applicable here on the planet, even though it might be not one of those super profound discoveries. But for astrophysicists, this is a big discovery. It finally helps us realize that electromagnetism um, is a huge part of the formation of early planetary system. And future studies might even help us explain how all of this relates to the magnetic field that's then formed in the star system itself, and how all of this connects and interacts with everything in the actual system. And interestingly, this also presents a really beautiful picture of how planetary systems form. It of course starts with the atomic forces creating the actual structures of atoms that then form into larger pieces through um, various molecular forces, such as, for example, van der Waal forces. And as these pieces grow larger, that's when electromagnetism kicks in. And then the gravity. So essentially, all of the forces, all of the fundamental forces, start becoming part of this creation of the star system, suggesting that it's not just gravity and it's not just one force. It's all of them together that form beautiful planets and beautiful stars that we see everywhere in the galaxy and the rest of the universe. Now, unfortunately, that's all we kind of know about this particular discovery for now. And once the um, astrophysicists discover something else, we'll make sure and follow this up with another video. On that note, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.